Sky Factory 2 is a Minecraft mod pack that completely upends the traditional progression path, setting you in a tree on a single dirt block in the sky, surrounded by void. I created my world, then perused the achievement book, which described our starting situation and contained a list of achievements to guide my progress through the mod pack. First was the Wood Age, whose tasks involved setting up and obtaining basic resources. I started out by mining my starting tree and creating a small platform to catch the saplings. The first quest was to break leaves with a crook to get a silkworm, which I did almost immediately on the next tree that grew. With the leftover wood I expanded the platform a little so I could place down a permanent crafting table, then started growing another tree. By the way, this mod pack has a feature where you can spam shift to speed up sapling growth. Aw oh yeah, shake that tail! The sapling finally grew, and I used the wood to craft a barrel. The barrel is a new block added by this mod pack, which functions by inputting biologic materials and converts them into dirt after a short time. With this block I can increase my dirt supply, and also take off the next quest in the achievement book. After that I made a bit of extra space to grow two trees at once, making my twerking twice as effective! Ugh, of course it had to be a big tree. The next tree that grew I infested the leaves with a silkworm, taking off the next box in my book. While the tree was infesting, I looked at upcoming quests and checked out the open blocks book. And before long, the silkworms had spread to the whole tree! It was at this point that I remembered about Vein Miner being in this pack, allowing me to harvest all the silk instantly, and by doing so, completed the next task from the achievement book. Wow, we're really flying through these! Next up was crafting a sieve, which I did using the string I just gathered. After that, the next quest was collecting rainwater using a barrel, but considering it wasn't raining, I just skipped that one for now. Instead I made some Tinker's Construct tables, but turns out tools can't be made out of wood. I have to use stone or flint. Which is exactly what the quest book said, so my bad for not reading it I guess. I continued expanding the platform, and by this point I had amassed enough spare saplings to turn into dirt, which I then sifted, giving me stones, and grass seeds on the first try! The stones are used to craft into cobblestone, which just so happens to be the next task as well! And since I now had a cobble, I could use a hammer to turn it into gravel, then sand, and finally dust. Each of these can be sifted to obtain different resources. The next quest said to sift one of each, so I first sifted the dirt for stones, crafted the stones into cobble, hammered the cobble into gravel and sand, and in addition to the dust I had sifted earlier, satisfied the conditions for this achievement. While expanding the platform, I noticed another giant tree grew, ugh. I could use vein miner with the crook to deal with the leaves, but without an axe, I couldn't vein mine the trunk. I looked at Tinker's construct, and turns out I can make a stone axe that actually works and isn't just used for casting. So I made one, and finally the days of towering up to deal with those annoying big tree stems are no more! It wasn't in the book, but I feel like this was a personal quest complete for me nonetheless. With that problem dealt with, I placed down some barrels in case it rained, then moved on to the next section of the quest book, since all the ones left in this part required water to complete. Making a monster house as a first goal sounded pretty scary, so I opted for the much friendlier sounding animal spawning platform instead. As it turned nighttime though, I realized I forgot to torch up the platform, and it inadvertently made an area ripe for spawning hostile mobs! Oof, there we go, that should fix the issue. I forgot to mention, but since stone is such a rare resource at this point, making a furnace to cook charcoal for torches is kinda out of the question for now. I just have to make do with this one that I spawned in with. It eventually turned day, and I dealt with the leftover mobs with no issues before I picked up some bones which I promptly used to upgrade my hatchet and check off the task from earlier. Once again, all that was left of the Wood Age tasks were ones that required water, which I could only get by collecting rain in a barrel, so I was pretty much just waiting for it to rain before I could get anything else done in that chapter. I planted grass seeds to complete the animal spawning platform, then began sprucing up the base, making a slab furnace to smelt torches, building a platform, and adding railings. Finally, I started to work on a monster spawning area. I don't know what I was thinking when building this mob spawner. Like, I know how to make a regular mob grinder, so why did I make this abomination? Anyway, that's that quest completed. Next I made a mattock. Since I don't have any water I can't actually farm yet, but at least I was knocking out tasks while waiting. Speaking of things I was doing to pass the time while waiting, while I was grinding the mob farm, a baby zombie riding a chicken appeared! I built a little fenced area for the chicken and named him Monty. Hopefully I can make a grass platform for you soon, little guy. After that I continued grinding the mob farm, expanding the platform, saying hi to Monty. I built a platform, not to use it for anything, but just to pass the time. I began to lose hope, when finally, on day 7, I was blessed with a downpour of rain onto my land. I rushed into action, and using a bucket I obtained from mob drops, quickly made an infinite water source. I sifted the dirt I had stored to get stones, which I turned into dust to put in the water filled barrels to create clay. With the clay I was able to make a crucible, which I put in some cobble to start making lava. While the lava was smelting, I started making a platform for the cobble generator. 
Now, I know what you're thinking. Cobblestone generator uses lava, wooden platform. Yeah, I get it, but like, wood is pretty much my only building block. Getting enough cobble to make the generator would take forever. So I figured I would just get the cobble I needed from the generator and quickly rebuild it with non-flammable materials. Finally, with water and lava in hand, I put together the cobblestone generator. I put a crafting table behind it so I could just hold down left click and the cobble wouldn't fall behind where I couldn't pick it up. But as I did, the structure caught fire! Yeah, put a slab over the top of the lava, that'll help. I got to 9 cobble, half of what I'd need to replace the machine, when water started pouring out. The block must have been broken by the fire! I hastily replaced the wood blocks with cobble as quickly as I could, hoping to prevent the further spread of fire. I almost had enough cobble to replace the whole structure when I heard some burning. As the slab I was standing on burned away, it was the end of this world. Nick's world started out pretty much the same. Starting platform, shake that tail. Silkworms, sifting dirt, shake that tail. And six in-game days later of mining trees, it was finally raining. I was so ready for this. This time I had been harvesting trees the whole time, so I had a surplus of dirt to use for cobble. I'm not taking any chances this time. I made sure I grinded enough trees to make a fully stone platform and cobble generator. I had finally succeeded in making a working cobblestone generator, yielding me an infinite source of cobble and progressing me firmly into the stone age. I was so happy, I just single-mindedly farmed stone for a bit. But there were quests to do, so I opened up the quest book to see what was up next. Create a dark room for mob spawning. Yeah, I remember how that went last time. Let's take this opportunity to do it right. Mob grinders take lots of materials though, so I built this long cobblestone generator that let me use vein miner to mine 7 cobble at once! How efficient! Having gathered all the materials I needed, I started work on the mob farm, and voila! Much better this time. It was working great until... To make it worse, turns out by making the spawner 3 tall, I was unintentionally spawning endermen! I fixed the issue, only to find the endermen were stealing all my dirt! Stop that! That's a really valuable resource in this world! With the bug fixed, I enabled the spawner and rechecked the task complete, then moved on to making obsidian in a stone barrel. Of course, I figured it out in my first try, and using the obsidian I just gathered, I made this epic looking sword! I rushed over to test it out on the mob spawner. Thing worked like a charm! Though I quickly noticed that picking up items was becoming quite a pain, and if I ever wanted to automate this, I would need some hoppers. First I tried sifting dust to get iron ore dust, but then I remembered that mobs sometimes drop little loot bags, so I thought maybe I could get some iron from there. After that I seemingly forgot about my hopper plan though, and started working on a smeltery setup instead. Then made a sugarcane farm. Then made a device that allowed me to toggle the mob farm on and off with the flick of a lever. And by this point, I had gathered enough materials to finish the smeltery, which I did. Another task complete. The smeltery would allow me to smelt ores more easily, and even double the output of ingots too. There was also a task to upgrade a tinker's construct tool with a metal part, which is something that I didn't even know was possible, but I guess it is, so there you go. Since I was already in the tool making phase, I used my spiffy new smeltery to make an epic matic with a pink alumite handle! So cool! Next I did the same thing with a pickaxe head. I don't even know if alumite is even any good, I just use it because it looks cool. After that I sifted dust till I had enough redstone to make a transfer node. This device automatically mines cobblestone from a generator, which means you essentially get just free cobblestone forever. That is, if you get the world interaction upgrade. I put in the upgrade and got it right first try, and wow, this thing generates cobble at an amazing rate. Gosh, vanilla skyblock players would probably kill for one of these. The next quest I decided to tackle said to build a second platform underneath the first one. With the power of water buckets it was an easy task, and as a bonus I now had a huge area to do all sorts of stuff with, should the need arise. Next I decided to make the mob farm actually automatic finally. I had made a traditional mob farm, but with the altered mobs in this mod pack, the tower was the wrong height to leave them at half a heart. To start I flipped the lever, disabling mobs from falling, or so I thought. As I was modifying the spawner, a creeper somehow blew up, destroying the base of the tower! After dealing with the cleanup, I swiftly finished the modifications to the mob farm, hoppers to collect loot, and punji sticks on top to damage mobs automatically. After re-enabling the spawner, it worked, and loot was automatically filling the chest. That's another quest complete for me. The last item to complete the stone age was to make a grass platform to spawn passive mobs. I decided to use pretty much the same design as the hostile mob farm, only I didn't have enough dirt to finish it, so this is all you get. To generate the rest of the dirt I needed, I thought I'd set up an automatic barrel system near the mob grinder. 
First, I placed down some barrels and a transfer node, then connected to a test barrel to start out. Notice any problems? I would have to pull out only the items that were actually compostable. Luckily, I found an item filter in NEI, and it was pretty easy to craft, which I of course did first try. I set up the filter and it got to work, as I got to work cleaning out all the loot bags the mobs had dropped. Next, when I returned to the main platform, I noticed something on the passive mob spawner. The island's first peaceful inhabitants had arrived. In my excitement while jumping around, I accidentally fell down the trap hole in the center. If it was active, I would have been turned into pork chops. Neko chops! It's a good thing these pigs weren't carnivorous. Anyway, I decided to let the pigs do their thing for a while, while I turned my attention to the mob spawner. The mob drops chest was constantly overflowing due to the quantity of mobs and the unstackable loot bags that they dropped. I took one of each mob drop item and put them in better barrels, then connected the chest to the barrels. This should take care of our storage issues for a while. I figured by this point the pigs would have had enough living on the mob spawner, so I decided to make a nice little paddock for them. I named them Oinkers and Oinket. I didn't have any name tags, but those are their names in spirit. There, all happy. I gave them a couple apples to celebrate their moving into their new home. Wow, I guess I'm the animal rights activist goblin now. Next, I built a wall around the spawning platform to make sure no animals fell off the edge. And with that quest complete, I can now move on to the farming age. First, I checked the mob spawner to see if the item sorter was working. I found this weird bag that gave me, in addition to some other items, a hay bale! I put it in Oinkers and Oinkets' pen. I'm sure they'll love it! Okay, time to work on some quests. I'd already made a really cool mattock earlier, so that's one down. Next, I harvested leaves to compost into dirt. I made an area of cobblestone with water barrels on top. Hopefully this would create some mossy cobblestone I could use to add self-repair to my Tinker's Construct tools. Meanwhile, this whole time Oingers and Oingat were straight chillin', enjoying their life in the paddock. I used the dirt I got from the auto dirt generator next to the mob grinder and built a nice little farming area downstairs. Next up was to craft a Manicchio seed, which was pretty easy since I already had all the ingredients. Now if only I had a farming space set up for several cr- Oh wow, that's convenient! I used some of the unused space to plant wheat and carrots. Then made a separate farm to grow block-based plants like pumpkin and melon. I'd say that checks off create a food farm and a manicchio farm, though my manicchio farm wasn't super big yet. To remedy this, I created a watering can to speed up the growth of my crops. But this method was manual, and required a lot of time just sitting there watering. So I made a sprinkler, which was a pretty easy crafting recipe, and just required you set it on top of a tank filled with water. Now it would water my crops passively. What a win! Since this was now handling all the watering, I got rid of the excess water blocks and expanded the food farm in their stead. I could finally progress beyond my diet of 100% apples. But I soon realized that the sprinkler was consuming water from the tank, which I guess makes sense. So I made an aqueous accumulator, and built a small platform slightly below into the side of the farm. There I built a 3x3 of water and placed the machine in the middle then connected it to the tank using fluid ducts. In theory, the aqueous accumulator would draw moisture from the surrounding water and pump it into the tank. And it worked! Now I wouldn't have to constantly refill the tank over and over just to water my crops. Of course, this only applied to my wheat and carrots, as, as the book said, it doesn't work on magical crops. Magical crops, which would soon become essential for progression. For speeding up their growth, I would need to craft a lily pad of fertility. This item has a complicated recipe with quite a few steps to obtain, the first of which is to create a weak infusion stone, using a diamond and some of that Manicchio essence I've been stockpiling from the mob farm. Using the weak infusion stone, I can convert Manicchio essence into Accio essence, and combine that with some of the pumpkins from my farm to create nature seeds. These can be planted and grown to provide nature essence, which can be used to craft a variety of items, one of which being the lily pads I needed as the base of the lily pad of fertility. Next, I crafted some magical fertilizer using ingredients I already had access to, and cried as I used up four of my very limited diamonds in the recipe. The last step was to obtain some floral fertilizer, which required bone meal and dyes. So I went up to the peaceful mob farm to grow some flowers. With the flowers grown and the floral fertilizer crafted, I finally got my hands on a state-of-the-art lily pad of fertility. I placed it down near the magical crops and did a little dance. Hopefully this would increase its morale and speed up the crops even more. I happily went upstairs to check off the quest, when I reread the text of the objective. Use lily pads of fertility. That's right, pads plural, meaning I had to make multiple to properly complete the quest. So multiply everything I just said by two. Cool. Now that I had some lily pads of fertility, it was time to craft an iron seed. This was another pretty complicated recipe that required several steps, but all of them were accomplishable with my current tech and resources. First, I would need an upgraded infusion stone, which is created by surrounding the previous tier stone with certain types of essence. I already had nature essence though, so I grew some of that and created a regular infusion stone. 
The next tier was not so easy, as it required higher level essences to upgrade. But one of the options was copper, which I already had an abundance of, and without much trouble I had my copper seed. After farming the copper seeds, I used the copper essence I had gathered to obtain a strong infusion stone. Now I could convert 4 stacks of Manikyo essence into a stack of Akio essence, then 16 Crucio essence, finally getting the 4 Imperio essence I needed for the iron seeds. And finally, I had my hands on the iron seed, completing this quest. Now, that was just for one iron seed, and I used up most of the Manikyo essence it took me the entire rest of the playthrough before that point to gather. And next up was a diamond seed, whose recipe looked even more insane. Getting it would require a huge amount of grinding. So, I'm gonna save that for next time. Bye.